All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, I've got my iPad out, and we're gonna be going through and using one of Unify's coolest apps, Unify Wi-Fi Man, to figure out how to optimize our Wi-Fi network. And when I went through and optimized the Wi-Fi network for this house, the amount of times I've used this app to do it was insane. It is by far the best way to figure out what's going on with your entire Wi-Fi network if you have a Unify system. So this app works with both iOS and Android devices. And so the reason it is so powerful is it allows you to very easily figure out the exact circumstances of your Wi-Fi network. It is great for that and I've been using it to go through and figure out, okay, why is this device transitioning? Where is it transitioning? Where am I having dead zones? All of those questions you can really reliably use this to answer because it gives you very great metrics out of here. So there's a few things it does. It's got the speed test option right here. So it just goes through and shows a speed test. And it's, I mean, it's a speed test. It's just another version of that. As you can see, I am right next to the access point, And so I'm getting a 600 megabit connection, which is pretty impressive. For some reason, upload is lower than my download speed significantly. Probably just the performance profile that iOS set up for this device. Since it is a mobile device, it's all about how they want to optimize the antenna pattern. So there's that. So it's got the normal speed test and that's, I guess, somewhat helpful. But what is very, very helpful is this Wi-Fi tab right here. So this Wi-Fi tab tells you everything you need to know and has some really cool features. So first it just shows you the exact connection you've got. You can see your entire map. You can see I'm going to the, U the Pro, to my top of rack switch, to my actual PoE switch, all the way to the access point. It'll tell you some just general parameters right here. And what is really great is the signal mapper. So the signal mapper is everything. What it's got is it's got three different tabs for the three most key pieces of information you need. First off, signal strength. So signal strength is really crucial anytime you're trying to set up a roaming because signal strength is the metric that almost all devices use. I know all iOS devices use to figure out whether or not they should roam or not. And so Apple was nice enough to go through and write a very helpful article on exactly how roaming works on iOS. And so this article is a great read for anybody who's trying to figure out how do you get really good roaming for iOS devices. And so if you're an iOS kind of family, this is by far the most important thing for roaming because computers don't really roam nearly as much as phones and iPads do because they're not nearly as mobile. Phones and iPads are often actually roaming between multiple Wi-Fi access points. So you're just on a call, a FaceTime call with somebody and you're walking around. That is actually when you're phone will be roaming in between towers and you don't want it to go through and accidentally drop a few frames of video because it's roaming. And so right here is the actual article that goes over how roaming works on iOS. And so effectively, anytime a device reaches below 70 dBm of signal, it'll go through and start looking out for new networks to join roaming with. And so that's one important thing whenever you're looking at Wi-Fi Man is figure out where that 70 dB location is for your devices. And so the other thing about Wi-Fi and overall just signal is so much of it is not actually based off of how powerful the signal is in the room, but just simple orientations and things like that. So if you turn a device or you put it on the ground or anything like that, you can have a 10 dB jump in signal just because you're maybe covering up the antenna in a weird way. And so don't worry about getting it exactly to 70 dB, but that is roughly what you should be seeing. And so if it's at like 60 dB, you're not gonna have roaming then. Then there are effectively two different ways that it chooses to roam. So after it reaches 70 dB of signal, it'll go through and do this roam scan. And that's just normally figuring out, hey, who is out there? And there is also another way that Apple has implemented, and I've not been able to verify if Unify does this or not, where there's a protocol that allows your iPad or iPhone to ask Unify, hey, where are the most powerful networks? Which signals should I look for next? And so that's the 802.11k profile. I've looked through all of Unify's articles and I've not seen anything that says they do or do not support that. But effectively what that would be is Unify would actually go through and tell iOS, hey, these are your best candidates for selection. And so that way the actual radio in the iPad or iPhone would not have to go through and do its own channel scan. So that, that's just one thing. I've not seen that and I don't know if they implement that, 
but if they do not, it goes through at 70 dB and I'll start looking out for other Wi-Fi networks that have the same name, basically other access points that I can choose from. And then once it's done with that, it goes through and has two different options for what it does. So of all those channels that it finds that have all the same network name, access points on the exact same network, it'll go through and pick the best one. If it is currently accessing data, so if you're on a FaceTime call, if it's downloading something, yada, 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 if that device has a signal strength that is 8 dB higher, then it will roam to the new one. But if you're not sending or receiving data to keep you from roaming just constantly for no reason, it will go through and it will require a 12 dB signal gain to go through and start the roaming process. And so that is really important information for you to know when you're trying to figure out roaming. And you just have to look at your exact phone manufacturer's information and see if they also have a similar white paper if you're not using iOS devices. So the other thing is you wanna make sure to enable fast roaming if at all possible, because fast roaming through Unify can allow that authentication to happen very quickly. It's not nearly as big of a deal for home environments where authentication still takes in the millisecond range, but for actually getting the best roaming performance, you wanna to try to enable fast roaming, but as soon as you start having weird issues, go ahead and disable it because it's probably not worth it, but it is something you should try to enable if at all possible. All right, so now that we know that our, re our threshold is 70 dB, we can now use this to really understand what we're doing. So we wanna check for times that our signal drops below 70 dB and then roaming should occur. And as you can see, just simply moving this around, we can have insane signal ups and downs depending on exactly what's covered. And so that's sometimes a good thing because having those dropouts will mean that the iPad will go through and say, oh, hey, is there anybody closer? In this case, there's not because my closest access point's right there. But if you're in kind of questionable areas, then that's what'll happen. All right, and so now there's also the great tab of throughput. And as you can see, this app is sometimes glitched. I'm gonna go ahead and quit it and reopen it. If you have it closed for too long, weird stuff starts happening and it crashes a lot. But when it works, it's awesome. So the throughput tab is great to understand what kind of performance you should expect in this area. It's not necessarily crucial for roaming, but it's crucial for understanding in real world metrics how good your Wi-Fi performance is in a given location. And so it's the one I use of like, is it worth it to put another Wi-Fi access point in this room? They've got 200 megabit connection. It's not that big of a deal. And then finally, stability. So stability comes from how stable the signal is, and it's essentially a ping in milliseconds and how much jitter you have on the network. So the less jitter you have, the better, and the better things like FaceTime calls will be, and anything that really requires high throughput connections it's not too big of a deal for web pages because it'll still load quite quickly, but for more complex things where there's a lot of back and forth, having low jitter is very important. So then we've got all these things and there's a great floor plan mapper right here that is absolutely a game changer. So this uses the AR built into iOS devices and it is also on Android devices. But for iOS, if you've got one of the pro models that has LiDAR, it works unbelievably well. And it will go through and scan all the floors and walls. And so I'm gonna leave that for a second because I'm gonna get a second video feed up. And so we can go through and with this walk around our entire house and it will give us a signal mapper of where everything is. And because this iPad Pro has LiDAR on it, it will be very, very accurate in detecting the walls. So you can start to see where you've got good zones, dead zones, everything like that. And it'll actually build out the walls. So you just kind of walk around your entire house and map this out. So now we can start to see where you're dropping lower. And let's go into my office here. We have now dropped to the dead zone, so we should expect roaming to occur in a minute here because I've got that right there is a Wi-Fi access point. The reason it's on the floor is these monitors are really bad about breaking up signal. So we should expect roaming to occur 
any minute now because we're right, we're kind of straddling that threshold. And as you can see right here, we have now seen roaming occur. And so now we'll see that our signal is no longer in the red, but in fact in the green. And so it's a great way of understanding roaming and where all of those points are. And I've been using it all the time for this. And you can see, okay, so now it's actually poorer performance because we are now connected still to the Wi-Fi access point in my office. So we should see that it'll start dropping over here in a bit. Wow, it's sticking to that. And there, roaming has just occurred. And so you can use this to go through and really figure out where all of your devices are roaming and where they should be roaming. It makes it incredibly easy to go through and figure out your exact performance. So right now, you can just see where everything is and where dead zones are and exactly what kind of performance you need. It's also really helpful because it will show you when you're dropping to a 2.4 gigahertz connection. So in this day and age, 2.4 gigahertz connections are still really, really important for your boundary areas where you don't have a ton of Wi-Fi, but you still need to be able to access Wi-Fi. A 2.4 gigahertz connection can go through walls much more efficiently. It means it's a lot more noisy and it's got less throughput, but where you need it without adding in unnecessary access points, 2.4 gigahertz is really important. However, if you turn up the gain too much on a 2.4 gigahertz antenna, one, you're bombarding your neighbors, and it's quite rude to do because there's not that much 2.4 space. But two, you're actually hurting your own performance because you'll see in here sometimes, if you've got it turned up too much, your phone will go, well, it's the most powerful device, I've kind of got low signal right here, and switch over a 2.4 gigahertz connection, even though there might be a five gigahertz connection that is possible and would give better throughput and a better overall performance because you've just artificially increased the dB that it's at without actually giving you much better performance. And so that's where this setup is just so helpful to have. And I've been using a ton to really go through and map out one, where to put the access points and two, how high to turn them up. Because sometimes you'll see that, oh, I've got my gain way too high in this area. I don't have that great a performance, but it's sticking to the access point because maybe I've turned my access point to high. And so it thinks it's got a very high signal, but in reality, it's a very unstable signal. And so I'm getting low throughput and it could be transitioning, but because the signal's turned up too high, it's actually not transitioning. And so by using that, you can go through and turn down your access points as much as possible. My recommendation for starting out with people is go through and first set all of your Wi-Fi access points to have the 2.4 gigahertz connections to low and then the five gigahertz connections to medium. That's generally a good place to start. And then from there, figure out exactly where you think roaming should occur and make that happen by toggling the signal mapper. The goal of Wi-Fi is not to get insane numbers in a single area. I could turn up this access point to high and set up to a huge 160 megahertz connection and give you crazy speeds. But then I try to go into my bedroom, which is just one door over, and now it's useless. So it's all about getting overall good performance. And this Unify Wi-Fi Man app is unbelievable for figuring out what that is because it gives you the real metrics you need to use to figure out exactly what your values should be and how to get there. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this overview. Go ahead and leave any of the tutorials you like to see me make in the comments below. And I will be having a full-on video on how to optimize a unified network for Wi-Fi in the coming weeks. I just need to go through and make sure I've got everything set up. I'm gonna do the full-blown one, so it's gonna be a little bit in-depth. But if you wanna see that, go ahead and subscribe. All right, have a good one, bye.